G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. On the bench today I've got the uh, B Rotor 130 from RC Timer and as you can see I'm actually pulling it apart. Why am I pulling it apart? Well it's got the same problem that I had with the DYS Lightning Quad and that is that when you arm the motors the video display goes to hell in a handbasket. Lines and patterning and when you really apply a lot of throttle, in fact this one was so bad I couldn't fly it. I took off and the patterning got worse. I did a little bit of a punch out and the picture almost dissolved into nothing. It was just mess all over the screen and I had to land it um, rather roughly but nothing broke. And it's obvious that there's some kind of interference between the ESCs and the power drain going through them and the on-screen display which these things have in them. Now this has got the B-Rotor F3 flight controller with built-in OS Minim OSD uh, on the back of it. And oh man like I don't know um, the lightning is the same the common fact seems to be these people they're all got OSDs these mini quads from China that just have such bad video have an OSD and I'm a bit of a purist I don't believe I need an OSD on my mini quad I artificial horizon what the hell who's got time to look at an artificial horizon when you're flying mini quads and okay battery voltage might be useful but who hasn't got a radio with telemetry these days um, and it's much nicer not to have to keep an eye on a battery voltage and just simply have your transmitter alert you when the voltage is getting low so these OSDs on mini quads I personally think they're a waste of time and they seem to be causing some problems because as I say the video quality just goes to hell in a handbasket interestingly enough the Shuriken 250 that I've just reviewed the video doesn't seem to be affected at all so it, maybe it's not intrinsic to the OSD itself but the fact that the way these things are put together now the reason I'm taking this apart this uh, RC timer one is because this PDB here is well I'll be honest it's a bit of crap actually um, it's terrible because the video signal let me just tighten up a bit here if I can hope it won't go blurry because we yeah, here we go um, the video signal comes from the camera to this lead here and then it runs all the way around here way around here to over to here and meanwhile there's all these big high current wires here and okay in a mini quad like this they're not that high but these are 20 amp ESCs um, you can get quite a bit of electromagnetic radiation coming off these ESC wires because they've got a pulsating uh, DC current going through them so that induces a current in the video signal and that current then appears as patterning which is why you get perfectly good picture until you arm the quad and the motors start turning so th this, this sort of video lead wanders way around here nearby all the stuff and of course this is all crammed in together and the video transmitter actually on this quad is supposed to sit right up here on the board right in fact these wires are right underneath the video transmitter so naturally it's going to look like crap and there's nothing you can do about it with that design of PDB because the PDB is designed all wrong and so I'm actually going to take the PDB out of this I'm going to remove the whole PDB because it's just uh, I've already got it loose I'm going to rebuild this rewire it with I might make my own little PDB up or I might just free wire it because I think it'll then work perfectly fine. So the quad itself, the frame, I love the little frame. It's a dinky little frame. It seems to be really, really strong. The motors seem okay. The ESCs seem to work all right. The, re the killer is that this PDB is just killing the video because it's been poorly designed. And in fact, I found even worse that the camera up front, because the video transmitter sits right behind it, the camera has, excuse me, this might cause a bit of hissing because I've got my wireless microphone here. Excuse me, I'll just get the bit I'm talking about out so we can have a look at it. Here is the camera and as you can see it's got a bare circuit board on the back there's no plastic cover on there so that you don't want anything shorting out against that but here is the video transmitter which again has got a bare circuit board and the video transmitter sits in here if I can find its little place three pins on this side I should have showed you this before I took it apart I suppose there's where the video transmitter sits in there and the camera sits uh, on this quite a nice little mount actually 3D mount they've made um, goes down here like so so you can see there's not a lot of gap between these two boards and there's nothing holding this board in it just the pins hold it in so if it works loose and bangs into the camera well it'll blow your camera or and or your video controller and of course it has this pigtail here which tends to put a lot of stress on the board because it's quite a stiff pigtail so even just you know this is uh, nah sorry RC timer um, sorry um, Frank you really got that so wrong and it's not a good look now Frank had this one built up for me and sent it all built up would have been quicker actually if, if I just got the bits because although I really love it when people send me stuff that's built up because it saves time usually in this case no nah, it doesn't save time at all I have to completely dismantle it and rebuild it to make it work because I cannot fly it with the crap ass video that I get out of this right now and the other thing that annoys me a bit is that this is obviously a proprietary video transmitter if this goes fut I've got to go to RC timer and buy a replacement one why can't I just have a normal little you know 200 milliwatt video transmitter that 
is easy to plug and play. That'd be nice. Um, I'm going to ditch the OSD because I don't need it. And honestly, I'm going to get a much better video signal if I just run the video camera output straight into a video transmitter, proper conventional video transmitter, and then we'll be right. So this PDB here, it's got a 5 volt BEC on it to power your flight, contro flight controller and your RC system and that. I'm just going to use a little 5 volt BEC and I'm going to ditch all the stuff. Look how much stuff's on this PDB and it doesn't really, it's not worth a rat's ass actually because it's just the, so much noise in here. So I'm going to strip all that out and wire the SEs. I'm going, to, I'm going to make it, build it the way I would have built it if I'd started myself and we'll see how it flies after that. But again, we've got that DYS Lightning which has got the same problem and I might even have to strip this down and rebuild this because again, as I mentioned in a, another video, the camera is up this end here and the video signal goes all the way back, 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 back to the video transmitter there with all these high current wires running along. Of course you're going to get a crap ass video signal. Badly designed, that's why. And I've seen, uh, who was it, Ali Shanmiao posted a video recently of a Chinese mini quad with the F3 flight controller and OSD. Same problem, different brand, same problem. It's endemic. They all seem to have it. They're just trying to be too smart by far. And I just wish they would actually play some, pay some attention to basic electronic engineering. You know, if you have two wires running next to each other and one's got a whole lot of current, then the other wire is going to get a whole lot of noise on it. And there's nothing you can do about it. And I noticed the DYS people were aware of that because they've got some hulking great capacitors in here to try and smooth out and re remove that noise. But sorry, you can only mitigate it to a certain degree. Good layout, good design is the thing you really need to avoid it happening in the first place. So these are going to be background projects. I've got so much other stuff to do and get out. And, and so these are going to be sort of, when I've got a spare moment, I will be working on this and the lightning. And I hope to be able to show you uh, the finished project projects, you know, and the comparison, the difference between before and after. But um, yeah, I wouldn't touch this PDB with a, with a barge pole. I'm sorry, Frank, but it's really bad. It's, it's not good. Um, you be, if you're going to buy a B-Rotor 130, and they look really nice, so I've got to say, it looks really nice, and flies beautifully line of sight. If you're going to do that, then just free wire. Free wire, or just get a different PDB, little PDB, and if you want an OSD, you can use an OSD, but for goodness sake, this is a racing mini quad. You don't need all that crap on your screen distracting you from your flying. So there you go. If you've got questions, comments, if you think I'm completely idiotic and and, and you know a fool for doing all this then please say so in the comments i'm always open to criticism in the meantime thank you for watching stay tuned and you will get to see the flight test of the b rotor and the flight test of the rebuilt lightning at some stage in the future meantime thanks for watching bye for now